Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, we are going to be deep diving into advanced prototyping in Figma. And to illustrate this, we are going to be using this coffee ordering application that we see right here. And if you click on the cart icon here, you're going to notice that this cart page is empty by default. And if I go back and I decide to add some um, coffee types to our cards. I'm just going to add this first coffee type. I'm also going to add the second one and we have three of these and one of these. The total number of items in cards is now four. And if I click on the cart items, you can see that those um, items or those coffee types that we selected is now displaying in our cart screen. And it's also displaying the exact number of items we added and the total price for both of these products. So if you calculate this, you will notice that it's giving us the exact price for this particular number of products. If I go ahead to reduce the count and I reduce the count of this particular one, as soon as it hits zero, these particular items leaves the cart, which is um, super cool. And with the use of advanced prototyping and local variables, we can achieve something like this in a few minutes in Figma. So guys, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you find any of these videos helpful. So here is the complete design for the prototype we created. And if I switch over to the prototype section, you're going to notice that we have just two threads, which is super cool with the introduction of advanced prototyping in Figma. All we have is our local variables here that have been set for our cart variables and our product variables we've also set some conditions and some expressions for our add button and our subtract button which is basically how we are going to be achieving this prototyping in figma so guys here we have the fresh design file to the coffee applications we are going to be building this design file contains no components or any variable or whatsoever so i'm going to put the link to this particular file in the description so that you can download and have a template to start working with before we tamper with it with um, different variables and interactions. To start creating our prototype, there's a few things we are going to need to do. Here, I'm going to move these images to the left a little bit more so that I can create more room. And for this particular cat pages, or this particular cat screens, I'm going to move this empty state element to this particular screen here, and I'm going to delete this empty cat screen. This is because I want to use a single screen, which is this cart screen, to display if the cart is empty or if the cart has items in them. The next thing I want to do is to identify reusable elements in this design and make them a component. First, we have this group of cards that are similar to each other, which is obviously a reusable element. We also have the buttons in these cards, which are reusable elements. And what we want to do is to create a component of this button so that we are going to set our interactions on a single component and it will take effect on all the buttons in this design instead of adding those interaction on the buttons individually. So here we also have a reusable element which is this add to cart card here. Um, I'm also going to extract this and create a duplicate here. So here we want to work on making these components or these elements a component. So first, for this frame here, this button, I'm going to make it a component. And I'm going to copy this component by holding out and creating a duplicate. So here we have an instance of this button. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to come to this card here, this card section that we have here. I'm going to click on the button in the card item, and I'm going to paste to the place. This is because I want to replace this button in this card here with the component we created. So that if I make a change to this component, it takes effect on the button in this card so here i also want to make this particular card a component so i'm going to go ahead and click on this create component button to make it a component now we have a card component so for this card components what we are going to do typically is to add a um, local variable and we're going to call this local variable product so i'm going to create a variable collection and i'm going to call this collection product so our products for this card are going to have a number of properties. Here we have the product title. So I'm going to go ahead to start creating different variables for this our product card. So I'm going to click on create variable. The first one is going to be a string variable and the name is going to be um, product title. Product name, let's say for instance, product name. And here I'm going to call this 
for this we have the mixed black coffee so i'm just going to copy copy this text since this is the component we are using as our default and i'm going to paste it here we also have the price next so the price is going to be a number variable i'm going to click on the number variable and i'm going to call this price so here we have product name we have the price um, so we also want to have a number of variables for this particular cart so we also want to have um, um, the number of items in cart so how many of this particular type of coffee are you ordering so here we are going to also have item count i'm going to create a number variable it's going to be item count and it's going to be zero by default so for this price you can see here we have 12 dollars so we can go ahead to make this 12 dollar um, for this mixed black coffee so we still have um, a number of things to represent so we also want to know if this card itself has been added to cart or not so that immediately the count of this particular card starts from one we know that it has been added to cart so i'm going to also add a new variable this is going to be a boolean variable and this boolean variable we will we will call it add added to cart so for this single card you are going to be having four variables which is the product name the price the number of items in the cart and the added to cart button so i'm going to close this up as once we have this our card component setup i'm going to remove this card component for the cart section because we have not gotten to the stage where we are going to make this a component so i'm just going to remove this and from here what we want to start doing is to work with this particular card component now we want to represent all the items in our actual designs as components so that we can um, render the different variables in this component so i'm going to select this and i'm going to create a duplicate um, just like this and for this duplicate which is the instance of this component i'm going to cut it by hitting command x and i'm going to click on each of this card item here i'm going to select every single one of them right click and click on paste to replace now we have this component instance um, as all the items here in this card section so what we want to do now is to set our variables for other products and display these, those variables based on the different modes we've created. I'm going to bring in our images so that we can see the different images or the different coffee types we are going to be having. So for this very first one, you can see that the name of this coffee up here is Espresso. Is Espresso. So I'm going to copy this name and I'm going to replace it with this mixed black coffee that we have here i'm going to go ahead to click this plus items to create new variable mode and you can see here we have mode one mode two so for here i'm also going to rename the name to espresso and here we want to add another product another coffee type so i'm going to go to this next one which is this caramel coffee type i'm going to copy it i'm going to rename that mode to it and i'm going to give it the same product name so for this price, I want to change the price of this to let's say 45 and the item count is still going to be zero and the added to cart will be zero. So I'm going to close this up or before I close this up, I'm going to go ahead to add other coffee. I'm going to click on this ice coffee and I'm going to click on this plus button to create another mode. This is going to be the ice coffee and the title or the product name is still going to be ice coffee i'm going to just change the value of the price to let's say 24. so i'm going to add one more which is this hot coffee click the plus button i'm going to make this hot chocolate hot chocolate and this is going to be let's say 30 dollars for instance so here we have four different products so i'm going to close this up now we have four different product what we can then do is to display the different variables of this product based on um, what we've selected each of these cards to be so in order to do that first we are going to make some adjustments to the components here so i'm going to click on this title elements here and for the title i'm going to come to this section where it has text and apply variable and the variable i want to apply is the product name 
So once I apply that, you can see that the product name here has changed to Expresso and same as all the cards we have in this section. I'm going to come to this pricing section. You can see here, this is actually two different text section, but I'm going to click on the one that has only the numbers and I'm going to go to this same text section and I'm going to click and change this to price. So you can see that the price has also changed to the price we set in our local variable. So now, how do we then change all of these cards to have the different products we have in our local variable here? This is very simple. I'm going to select this particular card. And if you come to this layer section, you're going to see that there is this change variable mode. And here we have products and we have all four products here. This first one is the Expresso because it's the first one we created by default. But I'm going to go to specifically set it to the Expresso um, mode. I'm going to click on this second one. I'm going to come here, go to the product and change it to the Caramel um, mode. But here you can see that the title and the price have changed. I'm going to do the same thing for this. I'm going to go to product, change this to iced coffee. The price and the title have changed. I'm going to do the same thing for the last one and change it to the hot chocolate. So here we have the title and the prices changed, but the the images of this item have not changed. So how do we get to change the images of these items? We are going to achieve that through the use of instance swap. So to change the image in this particular card using instance swap, the first thing we need to note is that this image that we are going to be changing has to be a component. So, and as you can see here, this is not a component and that is why we don't have the button to create an instance swap. But as soon as I create this expresso here, let's say this very first image, I create it as a component by clicking on the component button and I copy this by creating an instance, cutting this instance and replacing the image here with the instance of this component that I just created. You'll notice that here we then have a button to create instance swap. And to be able to swap this place with other instances, other images that you're going to be replacing it with will also be a component. So I'm going to select all of these images. I'm going to come to this component section here and create multiple components. So all of these images are now individual components. Now we are going to go ahead to set the instance swap to this particular image. So I'll click on the button here that says create instance swap. And for this instance swap, I'm going to call it image. And for the images, I'm going to select the images that we are going to be swapping in that position. Here we have the hot chocolate, the iced coffee, the mixed black coffee, and this caramel option. So once we have that, I'm going to go ahead to create property. So here you can see that this component now has an image property for the instance swap. Now, if we click on individual um, cards like this in our design, you're going to notice that we, we now have this image property here that gives us the ability to switch between different um, images in this section. But of course, this particular card is for the Expresso. So I'm going to click on this Expresso. I'm going to come to the next one here, which is the caramel. Click on the caramel um, image option here. And as you can see, it has been changed. I'm going to come to the iced coffee here, click on it and change this to the iced coffee option. Click on this hot chocolate option. Come here and change the image to the hot chocolate option. I think there is one particular one, which is this mixed black coffee that we did not add. Um, you can go ahead and add it um, in your designs. So as you can see here, all of these like buttons are active and that is because the major component here has an active like button. I'm just going to turn this layer off just so that we don't get confused um, because we are not going to be creating any functionality on the like or favorite button. So now we have our different um, cards. Now we have our different cards um, with their respective modes and their respective images. The next thing we want to do is do something similar um, to this particular cut cards here. So we are done with these images. I'm just going to take this um, to the right. I'm also going to move these images um, here because this is what we want to be creating next. So I'm going to create a duplicate of this particular comp of this particular element here. And I'm going to move this a little away because we are um, kind of done for now with these particular ones. 
we're going to come back to creating interactions on these buttons but before we do that i want us to get this particular add to cart um, components done so here we've created for the home page the card for the home page now we are creating this card for this particular card page we want on clicking on each of these to reflect the respective items on this card page so just like we mentioned of course we are going to be using our button component that we created earlier which is this so i'm going to first create an instance of this again i'm going to cut it come to this card section click on this button component and paste to replace now we have the instance of our button component here um, i'm going to click on this card this entire card frame here and i'm going to click on the component button to make it a component so on this component as usual we want to go ahead to tie it to the respective modes i'm going to click on this title here and and for the title i'm going to apply a variable which is going to be the property name or the product name rather so i'm going to click on the product name for this i'm also going to click on this particular pricing as you can see this is also two different text layers so that we can set the pricing um, variable to this particular text layer i'm going to come here click on this and click on price so here we also have the price and the title changed for this particular card company i can then go ahead to create a duplicate of this i'm going to cut it and i'm going to repaste to replace what we have so now we have this um, another thing we want to do is to create the different instances of this particular card component so um, for each card that we add to this particular card we are going to have different um, items so i'm going to create like four different instances let me create them outside of this screen and add this button back so we are going to create like four different instances so that we can use this to represent the four different products that we have here so for this i'm going to click on the first one come to this layer as usual i'm going to make this the espresso option click on this i'm going to make this the next which is the caramel option click on this make this the next um, the iced coffee option and then i'm going to make this the next the hot chocolate option so we finish setting them to their respective mode the next thing we need to do is to switch the images and just like the way we did for the previous card um, to switch the images this section has to be a component so i'm going to click on this espresso here make it a component copy it come to this image section here right click and paste to replace so here we have a component i'm going to do the same thing for other images here select every single one of them right click create multiple components now we have multiple components for these guys i can now click on this section here this component section inside this component i'm going to come to this design section click on create instance swap we're going to rename this instance swap to images as usual and here we are going to select the images we just created now this is going to be a little bit confusing because i don't know the differences between both of this but i'm going to close this up and add um, a one to this particular names so that i can differentiate it from the images i had earlier so i'm just going to quickly do that okay i think it's all done and then click on this instance um of this image here and come here create new property it's going to be images just like we wanted to do i'm going to then create these preferences and here i can properly identify the ones with a one at the end of it so i'm going to click on hot chocolate um and i think i have the mixed black coffee so this is four is remaining one okay this ice coffee here with the one um after its name so i'm going to close this up and we have all the items we want to swap for this particular instance i'm going to go ahead to create property 
Once I've done this, on clicking on each of these, you can then see this image's property and we can choose between what image we want to display. So for the caramel, we are going to choose the caramel option. For this iced coffee, we are going to choose the iced coffee option. And for this hot chocolate, we are going to choose the hot chocolate option. Now we have our complete cards for this menu page and for the add to cards page. We can then begin our prototyping. So to begin our prototyping, I'm just going to move this image all to the far left here and bring in these components because these are the components that we are going to be making major changes to. So So guys, here we are going to look at the user's journey from the very first click. So here we want um, the situation where a user clicks this plus item, trying to add this particular item to cards. It reflects in our cards section, which is the total number of items in our cards. It reflects on it and it also reflects the total number of items that the user wants to add to cards. So here we need to have our cards collection. We've had our product collection as a local variable. We need to have our cart collection that is going to show our total price and the total number of items in our cart. So I'm going to click on this here and I'm going to click on create collection. And for this collection, I'm going to call it cart. So for this cart, we are going to add, the first thing we are going to add is the cart count, which is the number of items in the cart totally, which is going to be a number variable. This is going to be cat count. And the next thing we want to have is the total. So we are going to have another number variable. We are going to call this total. So we also want to check if the cart is empty, if, we, if there is no item in the cart at all, so that we can display this no item in cart status here. So I'm going to have another variable here which is going to be a boolean variable and this boolean variable is going to be called is empty so now if the cart is empty we are just going to set this to true so which is going to be true by default so i'm going to give this value to be true by default and i'm going to close this up so here we want a situation where the user clicks on this plus button and it shows that the number of these items that have been ordered is one and the total number of items in cart is one. So since we are going to be displaying the total number of items in cart, I'm going to click on this text section here and I'm going to set it to cart count since this is what is going to display the total number of items in cart. So I'm going to set that variable to it. You can see it's now connected to the cart count and then we can start creating our interaction. So the interaction we are going to be creating is not going to be on this individual button so that we don't go ahead and start doing it on each of these cards. We're going to be doing it on the main component. So I'm going to click on this button here and go to the main component by clicking on this button. As you can see, this button is our main component. So we are going to be creating our interactions on this button. So the first thing is if the user clicks on this plus button, what do we want to do? We want to be able to add one to the number of items. So I'm going to go to prototype section. I'm going to come to this interaction. And here on click, of course, what we want to do is we want to set a variable. And the variable we want to set is our item count. We want to set the item count to be item count plus one. Click on the addition and we're going to add one. So for every time someone clicks on this plus item, we want to set this item count to be one. And we also want to be displaying the item count in this button here. So I'm going to select this button text field, go to the design section, select this button text field and come to this section here and apply variable. And the variable we want to be applying to this section is the item count because we want to reflect the number of items you're selecting. So I'm going to click on the item count. You can see it's now connected. And since we have this, we've created our interaction that um, on click we want to set variable of the item count to be one so we can then click on our prototype so that we can start um, previewing what we have
So guys, as you can see, once we click on this plus button, the number of items increases and we are going to do the same thing to this subtract button so that we remove one or we subtract one as soon as we click on this minus button. So I'm going to select this minus button, come to the interaction place and it's going to be a set variable and it's going to be item count and here we want to do item count subtraction and it's going to be minus one so if we go back to our prototype so in our prototype we can see that we can increase the number of item by one and by clicking on the subtract button we can reduce by one but we don't want this reduction to go into a minus state like minus one minus two minus three so what we are going to do is to go back to our designs and for this condition for us to be able to subtract one for it from this number the number which is the item count has to be greater than zero so we are going to click on this add button and add a conditional. This conditional is going to state that if item count is greater than zero, then we want to be able to use or perform this action of removing the item um, by one. So I'm going to bring that condition, that set variable into this conditional here. So I'm just going to drag it into this section. And what it's basically saying is if item count is greater than zero, let's us be able to perform the operations that says item count um, minus one. So I'm going to close this up and I'm going to open up our prototype once more. I'm going to restart the entire prototype and I'm going to click on this minus sign. And you can see that it cannot um, work because this particular item count is not greater than zero. But our plus sign works and once it's greater than zero, we can reduce the value. So here we can add this and you can see that this is happening independently of these different modes. So we can have the item count for this, have the item count for this, which is super cool. Now we want to be able to reflect the total number of items in cards in this particular card section. So what we are going to do is on this plus button that lets us add an item to cards, what we want to do is on click of this plus button, we also want to set a variable. The variable we want to set is our cat count. So we want to set a cat count and what we want to do for this cat count is set the item count plus um, still going to be item count. We're going to do addition and we're going to do this four times. And this is because we want to set um, this cat count to be the individual, um, the, to be the sum of each of these individual item count. So once you finish doing this, which is adding four item counts like this, you're then going to go and select each of these items individually. So I'm going to select the first one. And here I'm going to go with the Espresso first. So it's going to be the item count of the Espresso plus the item count of the Caramel plus the item count of the Coffee plus the item count of the Hot Chocolate. So what we are seeing here typically is on clicking on this plus button, first we want to set the item count to be whatever the item count is, plus one. And then we want to add that particular value of the item count to all the additional values of the rest of the item count. I just hope you guys are understanding. So once we have this, we should then be able to reflect our cat count um, variable here. So I'm going to click on the prototype. I'm going to restart the prototype. And once I click on this, you can see that the number increases here in the cat um, label up here. And if I click on another one, you can see that it's also adding up. This is because on clicking on this plus button, we are adding the sum of this together to get this particular value. So I'm going to switch back to my prototype and we want to do the same thing to the subtract, um, to the subtract button. So here what we want to do is similar to what we did for the add button. So here we want to set a variable and this variable is going to be cat count. So what we want to do to this cat count is also the same thing, which is the sum of this item count. So we are going to do item count, addition, item count, um, addition, item count, addition, item count. So we're going to do it four times because we have four items in our ordering app. So I'm going to go ahead to click on these individual items and select um the card count for the respective coffee types so which is the iced coffee and the hot chocolate so here we have um this so on um, clicking on this subtract button it also does this maths again and displays the value 
So let's click on our prototype to see if this is working. And I'm going to restart the prototype. And here, if I click on this plus button, you can see it's increasing. We have four here and we have four here. And if I start making subtractions, it's now reflecting on this card count. So here we can successfully um, display the number of items of each of these items and also the total number of these items in our cards. The next thing we want to do now is to work on our cards page. So I'm going to go back to the design and I'm going to select this cards icon and it's going to be an interaction to this cards page. And for this interaction, it's going to be a navigate tool. Obviously, it's going to be the cards page. It's going to be instance. So I'm just going to close this up. So at this back button, I'm also going to prototype it back to this particular menu page. So if we go to our prototype, we can see that the link between these two pages now works perfectly. So the first thing we are going to do now for this cat screen is to make sure that this um, empty state is tied to the empty state. And also these values like the items at the top here and the total here is connected to its respective variable. So I'm going to click on our designs back. I'm going to select this empty state um, element here and I'm going to tie its layer visibility. So I'm going to come to this I section and right click. I'm going to tie its layer visibility to this is empty. So because its empty state is true, this particular um, empty state is going to remain here. So for this particular card section, I'm going to select this. This is showing the total numbers of items in cards, which is the card count. I'm going to come here, click on this and check or select the card count. It's going to revert to zero because the default card count is zero. I'm going to come here and do the same thing for the total prices and I'm going to click on this variable section and make this total and I'm going to make the same total for these two sections here. So we have the values now zero because the default values is zero. So now we have this. We want to be able to now display these particular respective cards based on the ones that we've added to cards in this particular section. So in order to do that, I'm going to select all of this, right? And I'm going to hit Shift A on them to create an auto layout. So after creating this auto layout frame on this list of cards, I'm going to cut this particular section. I'm going to select this auto layout frame section and paste it in. So we have all of these items together. I'm also going to reduce the spacing between them to like 16 pixel which is fine. And just looking at this, um, I can see that this particular frame is going to be um, a lot longer than the sections that have been allocated to it. So I'm going to make this particular section scrollable. I'm going to move this empty cards to the top. And what I'm going to do is select this entire frame and create another parent frame around it by right clicking and clicking on frame selection. Once I do that, I'm going to hold command, click and reduce this frame. So let's say up till this second card here and I'm going to clip its components and for this parent frame that we just created, I'm going to go to the prototype, go to scrolling and vertical scrolling. So after doing that, I'm going to bring in this particular frame into our designs. So now once we have this, um, I'm going to click on our prototype and I'm going to restart the prototype and I'm going to go to our cart page and we're going to see what we just created and on scrolling you can see that we have this item scrolling down but there is this weird space at the bottom which is because the um, frame height is not long enough so I'm going to hold command click and drag to extend this to the bottom a little bit because I want this total and subtotal to be permanently visible so I'm going to go back to our prototype uh, go to the cart section and you can see that this um, is completely scrollable but of course we are not going to have a situation where we are going to be seeing the empty cart states and also this it's either the empty cart states or this list of items so what we are going to do now is to look at our local variables i'm going to switch to the design panel and click on these local variables here and for these local variables in our products 
I'm going to delete this collection one because we really didn't do anything on it. So I'm just going to right click on collection one and delete collection. So we only have our cat collection and our product collection. So if we look at our product collection, you're going to notice we have a Boolean property here that says added to cats, which is false by default. So we are now going to go ahead to tie the visibility of these items in cats to these added to cats items so that they are only true when the user have actually um, added to cats and the item count is greater than zero. So I'm going to go to each of this and I'm going to come to this um, visibility layer here on this I button and right click and here I'm going to tie this to add it to cart um, variable so I'm going to do the same thing for all of these card items one after the other click on add it to cart to tie it to that particular variable do the same thing right click on this eye icon click on the add it to cart variable right click on this add icon Added to cart. So here we can't see any of this because none of these items are added to cart by default. So here in our empty state, if you remember, we already tied the visibility to the empty state, but I don't think we can see that now. So I'll go ahead and do that again. On this I button, I'm going to right click and I'm going to tie it to this cart is empty state. And is empty is true by default because by default our cart is empty. So I'm going to click on this is empty. And you're going to notice that this um, element still remains visible. So now that we have this, what we want to do is on clicking on this plus button, um, we want to be able to change the status of that added to cut from false to true. So here I'm going to click on this button and I'm going to go to our prototype. I'm going to go to the prototype and the interactions we are setting on this add button. And here, what we want to do is to create a conditional. I'm going to click on this plus button. It's going to be a conditional. And that conditional is going to state that why, once this item count is greater than zero, we want to be able to change the variable, which is the set variable option. And the variable we are changing is the added to cut states. And we are changing it from whatever it is to true. So here we are changing if we are we are saying if the item count is greater than zero let's be able to change the added to cut boolean variable to true so i'm going to close this up and i'm going to spin up our prototype and i'm going to restart this first i'm going to go to our cut section and you can see it's currently empty i'm going to go back and i'm going to click on this espresso and add one to this so i'm going to open this up now and you can see we have our espresso here because the boolean property has been set to true for the added to cart boolean property or boolean variable sorry so we can do the same thing for other items and they are going to show just like this which is super cool now you can see once this is zero this item still remains so we want to take care of that situation that once this item hits zero we want to set that particular boolean variable back to false so that's what we're going to do now so i'm going to switch back to the design and on this minus button i'm going to click on this minus button what we want to do is to also set a conditional and that conditional is going to state that once the item in count which is the item count is equal to zero what we want to do is to set variable and this variable is going to be the added to cart variable and we want to set it back to false so that it's not visible i'm going to close this up open up our prototype restart this um add a couple of items to our cart go to our cart section and remove these items and once we get to zero we can't see the item again which is cool so we can add and remove items um, in our cart now the next thing we want to do is once we are adding an item to that cart, we do we no longer want to see these empty states anymore. I'm going to go back to the design. On our plus button, which is the first button you're going to click while trying to add an item to cart, 
Once this item count is greater than zero, we are setting the added to cart to be true. So we want to be able to see it. But that's not the only action we want to perform. We will also want to be able to set variable and this variable is going to be this is empty variable. We want to be able to set this to false. So by default, the is empty variable is true because by default, there is no item in cart. But once we've added an item to cart and the item count is greater than zero, we want to be able to set the is empty to false so that we can remove that from um, this is empty state. So I'm going to close this up, go to our prototype, restart. I'm going to click on this cart section and we still see this empty state. I'm going to go back and add a couple of items. And once we go back to our card section, we can see that we have an error and we are going to look at what is the cause of this error. I'm going to go back to our designs and I'm going to open this up. We can see here we have a conditional. We are setting is empty to false and we are doing the right thing. But what could be the problem? So clicking on this uh, frame here, we can see here this is the parent frame. And if I go to the design section, If I go to the design section, we can see that um, this is not where we set the is empty. But if you look at this second parent frame, the one that holds the auto layout properties, we can see that this is where we set the is empty states or is empty boolean variable, which is not what we are supposed to do. So this is a mistake and you really need to be careful which of these frames you are setting your boolean properties to. I'm going to detach this. And I'm going to go in to click again. And here we have this frame that is the is empty frame. I'm going to rename this so it's empty. So you can see that this is what we are talking about. And this is exactly the layer we are supposed to set this is empty state to. So I'm going to, since we've detached uh, that particular visibility is empty from this particular layer, we can go back to our prototype. Now I'm going to restart, add a couple of items to this. And once there are items in this, we are still having this issue. And in these situations, when you know you've made corrections to the mistake you made in your prototype and you're still facing the same issue, what you're supposed to do is to cancel or close up this prototyping tab and spin up the prototype afresh because sometimes even when you fix the error it keeps reflecting in your prototype so you have to close up the prototype section and spin it up again so i'll go ahead to close up my prototype section and i'm going to spin up the prototype afresh so i'm going to click on the play button again so that we run our prototype and i I'm hope to this time this works and as perfectly. you can see here by default if we go to our cards we have no items in cards we have the empty state and if I go back and I add a couple of items to cart, you can see we have the two items and the empty state is gone. Make sure you're setting those Boolean properties on the particular frame and not like the parent frame, just like we did earlier. And it's going to cause um, some issues that you um, might not understand what's going on. So um, once we are able to do this, the next thing we want to do is to set our total. So on adding a, an item to cart, once the item is populating, we also want to be able to keep adding the total. So in order to calculate our total, we are going to be making um, an interaction on this plus button and also on the minus button. So we are going to start from the add button and I'm going to open up our interaction here. And for this total, we are going to be doing something very similar to what we are doing to the cat count. So for this cat, as you can see here, we are adding the sum of all of this items in cats every time we click on the add button we're going to do the same thing for the total so i'm going to click on this plus here and it's going to be a set variable and here we want to set the total here and the total we want to set it um, to item count multiplied by its price and we're going to add every single items we have so it's going to be addition we are going to do item um, item count multiplied by price for the second item we're going to do addition item count multiplied by its price for the third and you're going to do another addition item count multiplied by price for the fourth we are then going to go to this individual item count and select these items so as you can see the item count of the espresso multiplied by the price of the espresso the same thing the item counts of the caramel option 
multiplied by the price of the caramel option. The same thing, item count of the iced coffee multiplied by the price of the iced coffee. Then the last um, item count of the hot chocolate multiplied by the price of the hot chocolate. So this particular maths runs every single time we click on this add button from either a new product or the same product. So I'm going to close this up and see if this works. I'm going to click on the prototype to play this. I'm going to restart it. And you can see here um, in our cart, initially we have zero. But if I go back and I click adding a plus button, let's add two items to this cart. And I click on this cart item. You can see here we have two items and it has calculated the sum of this. You can go ahead and do the maths if it's correct. But here you can see we are displaying the total items in cart and we are displaying the total in price. So you can go ahead to keep adding items from here since we are using the same button components and it's reflecting and you can see that the price also goes ahead to, replay, to reflect. It's going to multiply the price multiplied by the items in cart for all the items that have been added to cart. So I'm going to close this up and I'm going to go back to our designs. What we want to do now is the subtract button. So if you notice, if you click on this subtraction, nothing happens to our price. And that's what we are going to be fixing. You're going to be reflecting this price as soon as you remove an item from it. So what we are going to be doing is similar to what we did for the add button, for this total in add button. You're going to calculate the same sum every single time you click on the subtract button. So I'm going to click on this subtract button, go to the interaction section and I'm going to do the same thing. Here I'm going to click on add, I'm going to set variable and it's going to be the total variable and here I want to do item count multiplied by the price plus item count multiplied by the price plus item count multiplied by the price plus item count multiplied by the price. So we are going to go ahead and select all the individual items so here we have the espresso. the next we have the caramel option, the next um, we have the iced coffee and then the last one we have the hot chocolate. So this is exactly the same thing we did for the plus, we want to do the same thing, we want to calculate the same thing every time you hit the minus button. So I'm going to go to our prototype, I'm going to restart this, I'm going to add a couple of items to cut. So we have five items, three of this and two of this. So as soon as I hit the minus button, you can see that this figure is changing because it's recalculating this particular um, price. So guys, at this stage, I guess we are done. I'm just going to make a, full, a few adjustments to this. An example will be this particular section. I want this section to be scrollable um, so that we can see other buttons here. So I'm going to go to our designs. I'm going to switch to the design panel and I'm going to use an auto layout frame to group both of these elements and also both of these bottom elements. I'm also going to select two of these frames and hit auto layout or hit shift A to create an auto layout. Now we have an auto layout frame. I'm going to right click and frame selection and then use command to reduce the size of this. I'm going to clip its content. Um, I'm going to clip its content and I'm going to switch to the prototype and I'm going to make this a vertical um, scroll. So once we have this, I believe um, in our designs, we should be able to scroll vertically for just this product section. So here we can add different items. I'm just going to add all four items to this so that we can test how it looks like in our cart section. As you can see, in our cart section also we can scroll and we can go ahead to add different items. It's going to reflect on our total. And we can go ahead to remove some of this. And it's also going to reflect in our total. So guys, this is it, guys. I really hope this video was helpful and educative in any way. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, um, turn on the notification bell, and share with friends if you find any of this video helpful. Bye for now, and I'm going to see you in my next video.